Hi there, I'm Vonnie from Von Boo, and this time I'm going to be making over this fabulous solid sideboard. This is for a customer of mine and she has requested some Mint by Michelle decoupage paper and a blend of her paints. Before any painting can happen, she needs a good scrub and I'm also putting up the old knob and handle holes. The original hardware was lovely, however, they did get a bit damaged when I removed them and my customer has requested something else anyway. Now just for a light sand all over and even inside the drawers. I'm using one of Mint by Michelle's new products called Mint Grip and I'm priming the whole piece with it. And as you can see, I've already painted inside the cabinets. And now I'm popping her on her side to start decoupaging the drawers. I will be using this decoupage paper, it's Mint by Michelle in the A1 size called Field of Mauve. I had already decided the placement, so now I'm holding it in place while I start pasting. And I'm, I'm pasting with a top coat, it's a polyurethane water-based top coat, and I'm just applying an inch or so just to secure the piece. And notice I'm using this little tool. This is my best friend right now, and this is a felt applicator. Some people call them vinyl squeegees. It is a plastic card with a felt tip that is soft on your paper. But also to protect your paper, you can use a bit of plastic. And in conjunction with each other, it is the best way to get out creases and air bubbles in your paper. So you're probably wondering why I've put the whole sideboard on her side. Well, I'm not sure if it's the makeup of the paper, but they prefer to go on in the portrait mode. Even though this particular design is a landscape um, design, I find that they prefer to go on in portrait mode. You will notice that I mist occasionally. The misting of the paper, not saturating the paper, relaxes the fibres in the paper, which allows a little bit of stretch and give. So notice that I'm pushing um, the creases out and I'm occasionally using my fingers to get right into the edge of the drawers. When it's uh, been misted, um, it has, it, gains a little bit of elasticity and allows you to push into uneven surfaces. Also note that when I'm lifting the paper up like this, I'm lifting it above the previous pasting line, you could say. This is so I don't create any trapped air bubbles in there. Now just sit back and watch me continue this process all the way down to the bottom. I also meant to mention that these little paddle pop sticks are holding the drawers in their original position because I've got her on the side. When it's completely dry, you can use a very sharp blade to slice through the drawers. 
and then you can fix up all those edges that didn't get pasted down. I like to use a rubber brayer to squish all the edges down. And then you can sand all the excess off. And I do this to all the drawers and all the sections in between the drawers. Before painting, I like to seal the paper. And this is my preferred sealer. It's a spray varnish. I use a spray varnish because it is not water-based and will not reactivate the paper. I'm using a second a1 size decoupage paper cut in half for inside each door panel so I'm just measuring up here and I'm making a crease with my fingernail to cut that top shape and using the same process as before, pasting a small amount at a time using the felt applicator and some plastic, I'm able to get this piece on wrinkle free. I also like the paper to be just that little bit wider than I need so I can go back later and trim it. Before I paste right down to the bottom, I like to trim the shape with a sharp blade while the paper is dry. I also wait for the whole paper to be dry before I trim the sides. Then I'll seal with the spray varnish before we start painting. The first paint layer is going to be textured, so I'm using Mint by Michelle's Fresh Sheets and Salt Wash, which is a texture additive powder. I'm mixing them together in a separate container to make a thick paste. Now you can make this paint paste as thick as you like. And I really recommend using an old brush. This is an old chippy brush and I'm stippling it on and I'll stipple it on all over the piece. The stippling motion will create textured peaks and you can literally add as much chunkiness as you want. Next I need to mix up some mint mineral paints to make a mauve colour. I've decided in the deep roller skate pink, impressionist blue and fresh sheath white. And I think the colour is a great match for the paper. So the plan is to do a blend of mauve at the top to dark blue down the bottom. And I start with mints in the deep dark blue. However, after I've put on just one layer, I've realised that it's not the right bright blue that I need. So I'm mixing some Annie Sloan chalk paint, Napoleonic blue, with some of the In The Deep. And I get this, you can't see it that well, but it actually really matches the blue in the paper. I'm so much happier with this blue. Now I'm coming in with the mauve. Um, up the top and just remember that 
this is just the first layer and the blending doesn't actually have to be that brilliant um, I do tend to spend far too much time on this corner blending it you really just need to do a really basic blend I'm using um, a bit of a sponge here to just blend those joins together This is all that's required with the first layer. No fussing. So you can see that I'm just bringing the colours towards each other and while they're still wet I will use either a stipple brush or a sponge like this to just make that line between them a little blurry. Like I said the first layer doesn't have to be perfect. Now I'm starting the second coat. You can see I'm spending a little bit more time just making sure that smoky blend is a little bit better than the first layer. Um, sometimes you need to actually stand back and look at it from a distance. And it's knowing when to stop fiddling with it. As you can see, I'm probably fiddling far too much here. But um, I mean, I get it in the end, but um, really you don't need to spend this much time stippling that blend together and then of course I continue the same design around the sides of the piece stop fiddling with it Bonnie it's 
So all the painting's done and my customer would like um, a slightly distressed look. We're not doing a grungy look on this piece, but what we're doing is using um, some 240 sandpaper to just knock off some of the tops of um, that texture that we originally put on. I'm concentrating the distressing in areas that would naturally wear. If you like that real chippy look, a carbide blade scraper would be great for this. I do try to make it look a bit random as natural wearing is very random. So here's what it looks like, just a little worn and aged but not grungy. Because I have applied chalk paint, I am going to need to seal it. Um, the mint mineral paint has an inbuilt sealer, so I don't necessarily have to clear wax the mineral paint, but I'm going to apply this clear wax all over anyway. And to add a little bit more dimension and another layer to the ombre, you could say, I'm using some of Annie Sloan's black wax just down the bottom and on the legs. Now, a lot of people are afraid of using the black wax, but as long as you clear wax first, if you think you've put on too much, you can just wipe it straight off again, but you must clear wax first. Even hours after you've applied the black wax, you can use clear wax on a rag to rub it off, like an eraser. The last thing to do is add the new hardware and we're done. So here she is all finished. Now I know everyone's cup of tea isn't such a vibrant piece, but personally I think she looks amazing and the most important thing is my customer is absolutely over the moon. I really hope you've enjoyed this makeover. You're very welcome to like, share and subscribe. And if you'd like to see more of my work, you can find me on Facebook and Instagram. All links are in the description. Thank you so much for watching.